I'm the CEO and founder of the Neverplan Group, and today I'll talk about why it's more important than ever for us to foster and facilitate a culture of technology-driven entrepreneurship in the UK. The UK is home to one of the world's biggest, brightest, most dynamic tech ecosystems. In 2021 alone, 38,240 new tech companies were incorporated, and the UK is one of only three countries globally to have a tech industry valued in excess of $1 trillion. But it's not enough. We can and must do more. Hi, my name's Scott Lenick, and this is my Oxford talk. For the last decade, I've supported scores of startups, scale-ups, and established brands to design and build digital products. From Bulb to Booking.com and Buckingham Palace, I've had the privilege of working with inspirational change makers united in purpose to solve problems and make the world a better place. As a young boy, I saw firsthand the rapid impact an idea backed with the courage to act on it can have. My dad, when still in his early 20s, having left school with no qualifications, quit a job in commission-only sales to start a company offering warranties on second-hand cars. It was the first of its kind and it quickly grew to become the market leader, changing the car insurance market and our lives in the process. And seeing the transformative power of startups firsthand in hindsight, it's perhaps why I've dedicated much of my career to helping founders and early stage business leaders to thrive. By necessity, being an entrepreneur requires a positive mindset and belief in the future. Yet wherever you look, things seem pretty bleak. Listening to the news, it's easy to become overwhelmed. The fallout from COVID and the conflict in Ukraine has driven a cost of living crisis and inflation to levels not seen since the 80s. Add to that the recession that according to the Bank of England is coming our way next year it's not surprising anxiety over the future is rising. And that's before we even come to the issues of climate change and biodiversity loss, a key concern for 75% of adults in Great Britain, according to a recent ONS survey. It's all very different from the early 90s, when I was at university reading Francis Fukuyama's The End of History and its suggestion that we were on an inevitable path towards democracy, peace and prosperity. Predicting the future is a risky business, but there's one aspect we can be certain of, something in the midst of our immediate challenges we rarely stop to consider, despite it being one of the most impactful drivers of social and economic change, and that's changing demographics. Improvements in medicine have meant most of us are living longer. Combine this with birth rates that have been below the replacement rate of 2.1 children for the past 40 years, and we have a rapidly rebalancing aging society. These changes will have a profound effect. By 2040, the ratio of workers to retired non-taxpayers is predicted to fall by over 17%. That means proportionally fewer people to pay taxes, work and provide social care. And in order to maintain, let alone grow GDP, we'll need huge increases in productivity or we'll likely see living standards and access to the goods and services we take for granted fall. We need to find new, more efficient, sustainable solutions to almost every aspect of our economy. But thankfully, we're on the cusp of a revolution that could help us do just that. Accenture, in their latest technology report, Meet Me in the Metaverse, have coined this revolution the Metaverse Continuum, a spectrum of digitally enhanced worlds, realities and business models poised to revolutionise life and enterprise in the next decade. Most of us probably think of the Metaverse in the context of playing games such as Fortnite or maybe immersive VR experiences using devices like the Oculus. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. The utility goes far beyond gaming. Metaverse technologies, including augmented and virtual reality, blockchain, artificial intelligence, the internet of things and high performance computing, to name but a few, will increasingly blur the line between our physical and digital lives. But it's how these technologies converge that will help us solve problems more quickly, efficiently and sustainably. BMW is using NVIDIA's Omniverse platform to build fully simulated 3D digital twins of 31 different factories that mirror everything from the machines on the floor to the people working at the stations, helping them to reduce downtime and resolve issues before they even arise. Similar things are happening in the field of medicine, where Johnson & Johnson are using the Oculus Quest 2 
to rehearse and train for operations on virtual patients that they will later perform on in the operating theatre. There's even a twin of the entire city of Singapore, which can help with efficient management and more sustainable development. So despite being in their relative infancy, there is cause for optimism. From agri-tech to energy production, material science, education and transportation, these technologies are already playing an important role in addressing issues and creating solutions faster and more efficiently than ever before. But to fully exploit them, we need more entrepreneurs to understand and see the potential in these technologies and take them to market with new applications. And this massive latent demand, it just needs harnessing. As of December 21, there were 29 and a half million people of working age in the UK, and 64% of them would like to start their own business. And when it comes to Gen Zs, four in five want to break from traditional employment and go it alone, especially in London. If everyone did this, we'd triple the roughly 5.6 million private businesses currently registered in the UK. And whilst this might not be practical, one thing's for sure, there are a lot of people brimming with potentially transformative ideas that lack either the confidence or the means to act on them. So how do we help more people move from idea to action? We do it by working harder in the areas of education, access and attitude. In education, we need to provide more people with more tools, advice, guidance and access to finance. That includes more education around new emerging technologies and how to leverage them. This can and should start at school. Abe, the non-for-profit skills development specialists, authored a report in late 2020 recommending we introduce children aged 11 and up to the skills required to start and run a business. Their research indicated that doing so would boost creativity, self-reliance, collaboration and problem solving, all key skills for success in the modern workforce and ones which reduce the risk of unemployment later in life. We also need to dispel myths that being a startup founder is only for the young or highly educated. Not having a degree isn't an impediment to success. In the UK today, 29.4% of entrepreneurs only have an A-level or equivalent. Similarly, the average age of business owners in the UK is 40. And as our population ages, older people will need more targeted goods and services. So who better than encouraging more of this demographic to start businesses on their own? For this, we need to offer more midlife retraining, helping the middle-aged to leverage their experience, learn new skills and make connections. Access. The UK has some excellent incubator and accelerator programs, but more needs to be done to make startups a realistic proposition to a wider cross-section of society. The average startup requires over £20,000 of investment, a significant sum for most people, and it's still true that many of the best opportunities are limited to those with the best networks who attended the best schools. Women run 34% of SMEs, but in the UK only 20% of tech startups. While this is a record high, companies led by women still disproportionately attract less investment than those led by men, with only 12% of the total investment pool. And when it comes to ethnic diversity, we are way off the mark. Ashamedly, 93% of UK entrepreneurs are white. This needs to change. Attitude. Finally, we need to change attitudes to failure. It's how we learn and grow. I've personally been involved in three business failures, and while they were difficult to navigate, I value them as much as my successes. According to research by Fundsquire, 20% of small businesses fail in their first year, and around 60% fail within the first three. Failure is the norm, not the exception. And as a community, we need to acknowledge this and better support founders going through failure, to see it as a change of direction rather than the end of the road as they pivot or transition to what's next. So to sum up, despite the numerous headwinds, I genuinely believe these new emerging technologies are our best bet for addressing them. But technology on its own isn't enough. We need more people like you with the drive to take new ideas to market. So if you have an idea you think might change the world, why not act on it? There's help and advice out there. It's less what you've got to lose and more what we might lose if you don't.